Today is going to be an interesting one because we have this to check out and test. Today won't be a full review, just first impressions and test with the Fanatec DD1. First impressions, as always, I'm impressed with Fanatec packaging. It's uh, one of the most interesting to one package. Um, and inside you have the podium wheel looking like a trophy. As expected, the drive is super smooth, but what I'm most impressed about are the shifters and the buttons behind here. Super smooth, I think these are magnet shifters. You feel so nice. Everything rotates very well, very positive. First impressions in the K2, it feels quite sturdy. I'm only using bolts, I'm not using a side address mounts like uh, some people are using in Sim Labs. Uh, and I have the, the option on the K2 to bolt uh, three bolts in a pattern, in a triangle pattern. Uh, this wheel came with uh, an extra bolt, which now I'm using, and it feels like it's stuck around, but because I think the, the bolt threads aren't as deep in the DD1 as they were on the SASL, I needed to use washers. But no problem, I had more than enough washers laying around. Just a very simple fix. Uh, it feels sturdy, it doesn't move much on the shaft. Uh, then again, I'm not gonna use this on very high torque and speaking about torque, it's on low torque modes. Uh, I'm probably missing something very simple. It might be just a key or something in a software that I need to activate, something like that, and it would be done. As for the wheel itself, it looks really nice, it's pretty. Uh, there are two issues that I'm more or less aware of. The first issue is with these knobs. They break quite often. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them at all. Uh, they're a bit, they feel a bit flimsy. Of course, if you break them, you can get third party ones around here that are made of metal or something, but it's something to take in consideration. I think I've mentioned that before. Uh, and the second one is in terms of rotaries. They activate quite easily. They, they rotate very easily. Hopefully they don't activate on the first turn. If they do, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Or uh, if they do, there might be an option in software that only activates every second turn. The Trustmaster Formula One wheel at uh, something similar. It wasn't software. It didn't activate on the first turn. It activated every every second turn. It made it a little bit annoying at the beginning, but you really get used to it, uh, especially when you're not uh, changing options on the fly and you're not aware that you're changing them. In terms of everything else, in terms of, of build, in terms of... Uh, the way the, the handle is, I really like it. I've come, gr uh, grown accustomed to the, the girth of these, even though I would have something a little bit wider for my hands. Other than that, everything seems okay, and I'm liking how it's feeling. It's time to test a little bit this Fanatec DD1. It's gonna take me a long while until I get the force feedback correct. Probably even need to upgrade the drivers or the firmware or something like that and install even Fanny Labs. As first impressions go, uh, this isn't really a, f uh, a total first impressions. I've used Fanatec DD1 and a DD2 and Sim Racing Expo. Uh, and at Gamer Muscle uh, House. But it's been oh, well over one year that, that I did so. Or maybe almost close to a year that I've last tried the Fanatec DD1 wheel. So getting reacquainted with it, it's not an easy task. It's not something that you can get into and find the correct settings. It's, it does take a while, uh, especially in the Seto Corsa Competizione, uh, where the, the force feedback seems kind of vague in some wheels if you don't have it uh, set up correctly. The only wheel that I have ever gotten into a Seto Corsa Competizione with no setups and everything was doing all right was with the T300 RS. No other wheel has been out of the box as direct for a Seto Corsa Competizione as that one. Doesn't mean it's the best. I've had much better experience with the Fanatec CSL as you probably have seen on the other video. 
long story short, you're going to need a fair while until this gets dialed in. But when you get dialed in, this is something really different. There's there's no explanation until you try it. You don't really feel the cogging. You can, you can kind of emulate the stuff. I can em emulate the cogging. There's like natural friction and you can add it and you kind of feel like it, if there was like a little bit of cogging on the... Um, on the wheel itself, even though we don't really need it. Wow, that's a bad T1. As I have it set up, it's, it's more okay. It needs more tuning. The torque is so direct and precise. It just gives you the nudge right away. Tells you what's going on. Whoa. Oh, and it's also over the curbs. The number of times the it gives you the, the impression that you are going over the curbs. It's yeah, it's it's more. It does have more frequency there. A little sharper too. Oh, that felt nice. Going over the curbs. And I never felt that on a CSL and uh, that kind of unload of the front tire. That was cool. Man, I, I can see why people are hooked in this. This is pretty darn good. The best place to test for feedback will always be a Bathurst. Will that be in uh, a game or a wheel like we're trying it now? I'm not going to be as fast as Tortellini. I'm terribly sorry. I haven't driven in Bathurst for a while. If you don't know who Tortellini is, it's probably one of the fastest guys in a set of Corsa Competizione period. Go check him out on YouTube. He has manuals and stuff. You're going to learn a lot like I did. Now, what I'm looking for at the moment is checking out the compression and decompression of uh, the force feedback is felt. And when you have an imbalance of of the car in the track so for example over here going uphill on the left side when we brake you can really feel that the left wheel is more extended than the right one and because of that the wheel is gonna give you a different information it, it does happen on a Fanatec CSL and all the other wheels as well it, it releases a bit of the, the force but over here, it, it kind of gives you extra definition. This is like 4K against full HD, something like that. I mean, if it's, if you're just looking around, you know, 4K or 8K versus 1080p, probably won't give you like a huge impression. But once you sit down and you watch some content that is 4k or 8k not ready but made for that type of screens you see the difference this is what direct drives do they give you like that 4k to 8k information as if it were a screen and all the other experiences are more or less 1080p pretty nice very good most of my uh, most of my content is consumed at 1080p but we, you'll see the difference when it's 4k Pretty nice. I went very gentle over the curb. Just give you that information. It didn't give you too much of a force, a counter force. It just let you know, okay, it's over here. It vibrated a little bit. Now, the biggest, for me, the biggest downside of all of this setup is the setup itself. <laughs> it takes a long time. Took me like 10, 15 minutes to get this like properly working in terms of, okay, I like this force feedback. Saying like that, it, it's not automatic, of course. And the other thing is this wheel. Uh, these pedals, if I, if I was me, I wouldn't be doing these pedals the way they are. I would always keep these super crisp uh, shifters, but I don't like the top shifter. I probably don't have a, something to use it for, but... Oh man, that felt nice. But I, I just like a, a bigger paddle. Oh, don't push the brakes. Man, super impressed with this thing. And it's still in low torque mode. I have to figure out what the hell that is and how to fix it. 
And even if I need the high torque, I don't think so. I think this is more than torque enough. Doesn't give you me any problems turning it in. It's actually quite simple, very smooth. Lovely thing. There's so many tests that I still need to do. I need to test this on a set of course, uh, probably I racing too. But first impressions, or rather, impressions after a year, man, it's, it's a good refresher. Absolutely. So, guys, I'm going to leave you guys here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Day, day, girl, in the day, day, wheel. What a babe, what a beauty, what a sexy lady. It's a day, day, girl, in the day, day, wheel. She's so perfectly formed from the Chinese factory. Day, day, girl, in the day, day, wheel. 20 newton meters on both legs. It's a DD girl with a DD wheel. DD arms, DD breasts. Everybody wishes they had a DD girl in their sim rig. Everybody wishes.